Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, kind of a short day today. Uh, I kind of want to catch up on some sleep. Um, so I'm just going to I'm gonna do a short video because I would feel bad if I did absolutely nothing. Um, so I figured I'd show you something I've been building for a little bit. Um, since I left town uh, a couple weeks ago, I thought it would be fun to put together sort of a, uh, a solo role player toolkit. Uh, a lot like Ge uh, Geek Gamer's uh, solo D&D &D wallet that she's got, which is uh, really cool. This is uh, a, a bit more excessive than that, um, but I wanted to put together something where uh, I could draw on resources that I liked and I could provide a uh, an experience that I really enjoyed. Now, the reason you're looking at micro chat book RPGs because you're probably thinking, Grim, if I'm going to go and play on the road, wouldn't it be better to just bring something like this? And you have an excellent point. Uh, it's one book. It's a lighter rule set, requires less dice, and it will still provide um, an RPG experience. But what I thought I would do is I'd build something uh, up to my own tastes. So uh, I actually really like macro chat book RPG, but I'm a guy who likes uh, I like a lot more options than this provides. This is this is fun and I've played it quite a bit, but I wanted to show you what I've put together. So this here is sort of my uh, mobile solo RPG toolkit, and it's assembled from stuff that I really like and some new stuff that you haven't quite seen on the channel yet before. Uh, well, only a couple of things, but so I've found this little bag and inside I've packed some goodies for solo role playing. So the first thing I'll point out is these three by five cards, uh, which I've shown on the channel before. We have sort of an outdoor uh, terrain environment builder, and then we have the three by five dungeon master that I put together. Uh, and then we have random terrain features and things like that. So it's these that you're pretty familiar with. The system that I've chosen is White Box. Uh, right now, White Box is my favorite OSR system. And it's because it's simple, it's easy to learn, and it is... Um, I'm not, uh, I don't really have the vocabulary to, to describe that part that I'm thinking of, but I really like White Box. It is, uh, it is my favorite. It's really hard to choose between that and Delving Deeper, I'll have you know because they're very similar. I choose white box because it has one save number or an option for a single save score uh, for any given character. So this is our chosen rubric. Uh, we are using the white box omnibus as an add-on uh, to white box, and that's because it has more character options that I really enjoy, uh, specifically the necromancer, but it also has some really cool stuff for other classes. And it comes with some uh, full classes, like it has the bard. I really like bards. There's druids. Uh, it has the monk, uh, the paladin, the ranger, uh, and it has different. Uh, oh, and it has the thief. So it has. This is very very pleasing, and also it kind of comes with a built-in system uh, near the back of the book. It comes with, uh, oh, that, that's an adventure, a full-on adventure that you could play. And it also comes with a gazetteer uh, of Willow Valley. And this is sort of a pre-built environment and like an entire setting that you can play around in. And I found it to be, at least to my tastes, I think it's pretty well written. And besides that, it has a bunch of, it has a bunch of like magic items and things. So we'd be using that along with this. Our limiting source is OSR Solo. Uh, this has a lot of um, it has a lot of information that I found very useful inside it. Uh, it's a lot of that information is actually shared on the Three by Five Dungeon Master, but it's always good to have this around for uh, some extra bits of uh, some extra bits of inspiration. Like here, it has this Speaker One, Speaker Two, or it has these complex question charts here. Um, so it's, it's all things like that that really help out. And then we have two generative sources with the two, uh, table fables books, one and two. Generally, I find two to be more useful, uh, because of its ability to generate dungeons. We won't need that as much anymore because of another piece of our kit. 
Um, but these are always good for randomly generating NPCs and uh, different situations you might come across. Okay, so I mentioned I mentioned generating dungeons a second ago. So I found these on Etsy. Very, very cool. Uh, these are map and dice playing cards. These can double as, or triple, I guess. These can be uh, cards for building dungeons. You can also use them for rolling dice, um, which I'll show you in a sec here. And you can also use them for story prompts. So here's just kind of a card that shows you how to use them. And then what you would do is, oh, these jokers, uh, they are, uh, they, they're kind of like extra rules for this. I haven't really read through these. I'm far more interested in uh, these. So as you see here, these are upside down. These are different, um, uh, these are different rooms and pieces of a map uh, that you can piece together. The cards are upside down again. Did I do something weird over here? Yeah, this guy's upside down. But the different suits will be um, will represent different things. And as you see here, we have a D20 roll, we have a D6 roll, and we have a D100 roll. And so that's how you could use these for die rolls. Like, let's say I need to roll a D20. I can flip that over. Oh, okay, we got an 8. So that's a different way to use those. Uh, the different suits will usually say different things, uh, but the spades are always entrances. So this bit here, the cess pit or the cess and filth, this is like an entrance to a dungeon. And then uh, if you place this kind of over here, as you see how they line up like that, you can make an entire sprawling dungeon just with this deck. So this is sort of our dungeon randomization, as well as these. Uh, these names up here at the top are different bits of uh, inspiration, just little titles that'll give you maybe some ideas for uh, what's going on in the dungeon or what the room's about. Or you could even use these as like uh, almost oracle text if you're in the middle of something. So let's say we have a random situation we're in. We've been confronted by some people uh, downtown or something like that. We can flip a card. So primitive chamber, that could mean something like they've taken us to an underground cavern and they plan to rob us or kill us or anywhere. That's where the adventure can begin, especially seeing as that's a spade. So this is actually the start of a dungeon, conveniently enough. So that's these, uh, that's these cards. And this is, uh, the, in case you want some of yourself, this is Inked Adventures uh, Map and Dice Playing Cards. And they are, they are really cool. I've used them a couple times. And they have, uh, they've always generated something fun and interesting. Uh, you've seen these before? These, is, uh, these are things I would use to track um, uh, my progress in one of these or something like that. If I had some grid paper. These are like miniatures. So you can color code them to mean different things and just generally good to have. I got these at the local gaming store that I frequent nearby. Uh, and it just says that they're, uh, let's say they are a pack of 50, uh, 23 millimeter sorry pawns. So like, I guess it's like the sorry board game, but very useful. I use these all the time. Okay. So now moving on to some dice, you've seen these before. These are some different dice that will randomize several different things, and we'll go through them one at a time. Uh, all of these things are useful to different degrees. Generally, I find two of them. Uh, two of these are way more useful than the other two. So the first one we'll get to is a, this is the critical hit die. So if we were hit, or if we hit somebody else, we can roll this on a critical hit, and we can see what's injured if we wanted to uh, to implement that kind of mechanic into the game. So let's say I get crit, uh, somebody hits me really hard, and my legs are injured, so maybe my speed is halved, or maybe my arms are injured, so I can only attack every other round, or I can't hold heavier weapons, or something like that. The next one, and uh, in my opinion, the least useful, but the most interesting, uh, is this kind of dual color randomizer. So let's say we come across a, a new kingdom and we want to determine what their flag or banner is like. 
we can randomize at least a part of that, the colors on it, by rolling this dice. And if you see, we got red and yellow. So their banner would have red and yellow on it. Um, so that's those two dice. The next one, these two I find the more useful of the four. Uh, and this is a... Uh, this is like an NPC uh, attitude randomizer. So this is sort of the sort, this is the mood they would be in if you were to encounter them. So let's say we encounter a, uh, let's have like a, like a barmaid. What's, uh, what is she feeling? So she's feeling contempt. I think we've rolled contempt a lot. I think it's weighted. Unfortunately, I think it's weighted to that answer, but like you can, Okay, there's a there's another random one. Is amorous? She's feeling romantic, and the other ones are like upset, friendly, neutral, wary, things like that. I use this one way more than the others, but the think the I think the one to use second most is this weather randomizer. So let's say we've stepped outside out of a castle after barely surviving a dungeon, or more than likely dying in there, but somehow dragging ourselves out, and the weather outside is windy it's very windy outside so these are these are things that you could easily use to to help randomize your game a little bit more to add a little bit more flavor uh, but as i've uh, as i've said i find the npc behavior randomizer and the weather randomizer to be the more useful out of the two i'm still going to carry these ones though finally these are some extra dice that I keep around. So like uh, you've re you probably recognize this uh, red and blue D6 uh, that I use for the uh, for the uh, 3x5 dungeon master. These D100s are in here for uh, well, the green one really is for like a D1000, which there's not a D1000 in my materials here, but I always find it good to keep around. Uh, you can also use these for different initiative indicators, just other other random stuff that like your non-gaming dice set uh, would use. These are the least necessary thing in the entire pack. The only two out of here that you'd really need are these, but uh, these are kind of left over from other from other randomization tools that I've used, and I've decided to just kind of keep them in. So that is my uh, solo role-playing travel kit which will very likely be refined over time but this is sort of uh, the first iteration of it um, again probably way more space and cost efficient just to bring something like that but uh, I like a, I like a more a more full experience with uh, uh, with a lot of different randomizers and a, and a slightly more complex rubric but uh, yeah, sorry, short video this week. Uh, this new job is kicking my butt, but it's uh, it's really fun. Next week, uh, we're going to have a skirmish battle, and uh, I'm not I haven't decided what two factions yet, but um, we're definitely getting into some new mechanics as well as there are a couple new uh, skirmish games I haven't tried yet that are just kind of sitting around. But anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, what kind of things would you put in your travel kit? Because at some point, uh, I would like to refine this a lot more. And uh, picking you guys' brains is a really good, uh, really good way to get some new ideas. But we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.